Let's get straight to it then, eh? Valve is delivering a new Steam Deck. It's shipping soon. I've got a review unit here and well, it's excellent. <laughs> it really is. It's <laughs> just astonishingly good. On the face of it, it looks like a standard deck, right? But power it up and everything changes. You see, Valve has taken on board the criticism it received for its debut offering, which was already an astonishingly good handheld, let's be honest. And uh, well, it's addressed basically every major criticism and that starts with a big display upgrade. In fact, in terms of image quality, this is the best I've seen on any handheld, easily. And yes, it is OLED, but it's not just OLED, it's HDR2, at 90 hertz no less, proper OLED per pixel HDR, it's fantastic. I mean, fire up Ori and the Will of the Wisps, just as one example. I realized that pointing a camera at an OLED screen to film it, in the full knowledge that vast swathes of the audience are probably gonna be watching this on an LCD, well, it's kind of nuts, right? But look, this screen is simply stunning. It's like a miniaturized home cinema setup, if you will, in the palm of your hand. Valve says that the OLED machine gives developers the same performance target as the original deck, but at the same time, it also says that the 5500 megatransfers per second LPDDR5 has been upgraded to 6400 megatransfers per second, an 11% improvement in bandwidth. So 88 gigabytes per second of theoretical throughput increases to around 98 gigabytes per second. And let's just say that AMD APUs love extra bandwidth. So you've been looking at a Marvel's Spider-Man benchmark here playing out. And by my reckoning, that extra bandwidth is offering up 7.4% of extra performance. By improving memory performance, one of the key bottlenecks in the processor is reduced meaning marginally higher frame rates. And it's not a one-off either. A Plague Tale Requiem is pretty heavy on memory bandwidth and across the benchmark sequence here, the OLED model offers an 8.3% performance advantage over my launch LCD machine. In Forza Horizon 5 at high settings with 4X MSAA, the new machine has a 5.6% boost over the old. So content determines how much faster the OLED machine is, I guess. Uh, but I couldn't find any scenario where the OLED machine is the same speed or slower than the LCD. In Forza, I also noticed a touch less stutter, but this could just be run to run variants. And yes, yeah, some parts of any given game will thrive more on memory bandwidth than others. But thinking about it, a more efficient APU with the same 15 watt TDP limit could mean that we're actually seeing a performance gain of some description from both the faster memory modules and the more efficient chip. Even so, in Cyberpunk 2077, the canned benchmark only offers up a 2.4 percentage point advantage across the benchmark, but once we switch over to the more CPU-heavy city streaming results, this opens up to an 8.9% performance boost on the OLED model. And again, yeah, there does seem to be less stutter overall. So look, a 2.4% performance boost up to an 8.9% boost. Not exactly game-changing as such, is it? Truth is, it's an extra two to three frames per second generally when you're looking at sub 60 FPS gaming. But what this does mean is that you have a little more leeway in successfully hitting your chosen frame rate target generally. It's a nice bonus in a machine that's packed with nice bonuses. You can feel the commitment and the hunger in this product for it to be the best it can possibly be. And that extends to the software side of things too, where Valve tells us that over 300 revisions to SteamOS have shipped. Steam Deck just gets better over time, whether it's down to developers favoring the machine and optimizing for it, or Valve pouring in more effort into its Proton compatibility layer, uh, which often outperforms Windows, believe it or not. For example, uh, nine months ago, Oliver took a look at a range of 2022 heavy hitters running on Steam Deck, and we could barely get a Plague Tale Requiem running at a stable 30 frames per second. 720p resolution upscaled from 360p. Lowest settings, you know the score. These days, the game just runs better. 720p with balanced upscaling. Uh, we're still on low settings, but there's a significant quality improvement, a resolution improvement, and performance is much the same, if not a touch better. Oliver noted some pretty terrible stutter in this marketplace scene, and yet I'm able to run this at a flat 30 FPS now with no issue. And yeah, performance on the most cutting edge PC titles is pretty much the only drawback the Steam Deck has right now. 
there are some games that just flat out won't run particularly well on the hardware. You can power your way past some of the limitations on those Windows handhelds with the more capable processors, uh, but the experience of the operating system and the terrible battery life means they only have limited utility for the more mainstream gamer. A Steam Deck outpaces a lot of them in terms of quality of life and functionality, and this model simply extends its lead still further. I mean, the screen is just epic stuff just on its own before you're factoring in all of the other enhancements that have been made. And yeah, as long as you're aware of the performance limitations on the latest games, you cannot go wrong with this new Steam Deck.